tributes and first listed SBG Netball Association. You can stand on these steps. Good morning, church. This is a contribution or a tribute from the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Netball Association. Today, we say farewell to a wonderful woman, mother, sister, and friend, a woman dedicated to the sport of netball. Alit Waldron was a devoted netballer and sports administrator. She served the sport of netball in various capacities as a player, umpire, coach, manager, and administrator. She would be remembered for her outstanding performance as a trainer for scorers and timekeepers whenever the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Netball Association hosted regional tournaments. Her ability to transfer her knowledge in this regard was phenomenal, and as such, she would always be called upon to take the task, which she did without hesitation. Alit umpired locally and regionally. She along with the now deceased Anthony Jack, umpired for three jewel joggers, one of the then leading netball clubs in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Whenever the club represented St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the Champion of Champions Club netball tournament. Aldit formed part of the elite club of 10 qualified um, advanced umpires which the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Netball Association boasted of having, much to the envy of the other Caribbean countries. She toured with the senior netball teams as either manager or as an umpire. Aldit played for Falcons netball team for quite a number of years. After some time, she decided to form her own netball club. It was given the name Red Sox. And as I look through the funeral program, there is a picture of the Red Sox netball team. They wore red socks as part of their uniform. That team was a force to be reckoned with. Picture Aldit playing goal defense and her sister Brenda, goal shooter. She then joined the staff of the St. Joseph's Convent, where she was engaged in imparting her knowledge of netball and then further developed her abilities in other sporting disciplines and became the physical education teacher for quite some, a number of years at that school. Mrs. Waldron was an executive member of Team Athletics. I wish to place on record the expressions of sympathies which were received from the various netball associations across the region. From the president of the America's Netball, that was formerly the 
International Netball Federation. They've changed their name to, the, um, to America's Netball. And from its president, Mrs. Martha Bernard, and the presidents of Anguilla, Cayman Islands, Barbados, Bermuda, Dominica, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago. Those were the netball associations. The president and executive members of the Caribbean Netball Association, that is um, Mrs. Rufina Paul and her, her executive. And also from Mrs. Cathy Harper Hall. Those of you who are around netball for some time would remember Mrs. Cathy Harper Hall. She was president of the CNA for over 20 years. She also extended her um, sympathies. As we say farewell, go rest high on the mountain, Aldit. Your work on earth is done. All your life you have been faithful, not only in netball, but also to your church, family, and friends. I pray that Almighty God would grant them the courage to bear their loss. May you continue to sleep in the arms of the angels. Thank you.
Thank you very much to the members of the SVG Netball Association. Next, we have St. Joseph Convent PE class. Good morning, church. A tribute to my physical education teacher. You are our teacher. You taught us the lessons of life. It is you who made us. It is you who encouraged us. It is you who inspired us to have the belief in ourselves. When we fell down, Sometimes you scold us, sometimes you punish us. At that time, it felt really bad, but now I can figure out. Even that was for our goodness. We can never pay the debt which, which we owe, but today at least I can promise you the wisdom you provided us with the moral you gifted us. We will let it be our we let it be our power to bring a better and brighter tomorrow. So thank you for being there. Thank you for inspiring us. You are our hero and you will forever be. Thank you. Is there anything else from St. Joseph's Convent?
on behalf of the staff of St. Joseph's Convent, Kingston. Thank you very much, St. Joseph's Convent staff. Next we have the Catholic Catechist Group. Mrs. Waldron was a catechist. So, who is a catechist? One who teaches, informs, and is mindful of God in her life. Catechists are missionaries, evangelizers, prayer warriors, disciples, and community builders who give indispensable service to the faithful. It is a vocation, one who gives witness, one who has her experience with God and is a model of Christian faith. Aldit paid attention to her spiritual and personal development. In so doing, she attended CTI, 
which is Catholic Training Institute, which was held in St. Lucia and Dominica from 2009 to 2011 to deepen her spirituality and increase her knowledge to share the faith with those she catechized. During this training, the jovial, cultural, imaginative, innovative, dramatic skills of Aldit were on display. The cultural night when SVG made their presentation again, her dancing and acting skill came to the fore. As our folk song, Robot to Life, she was involved in a song which was composed by the SVG contingent. That special laugh, which still filled our ears, could not go unnoticed. Aldit was a woman of faith. She was a devoted Catholic who loved her church. She knew all the Catholic hymns and prayers and was happy to sing and say them. As a catechist, she was selfish in giving her time, talent, and treasure to those she was catechizing. She loved those students and was interested in their spiritual development. Aldit would look for all the Catholic children in the school who were of, who were of the age to be cate catechized and were of the age and encouraged them to join the first year class. Or she would speak to their parents if necessary. Aldit took that role seriously. As a catechist, she represented Christ and was conscious of passing on the faith to her student to go to know God, love him, and develop his personal relationship with Christ. As Pope Francis acknowledges, and I quote, being a catechist requires love and even stronger love for Christ and love for his people, end of quote. I enjoy teaching with her. She was an excellent teaching companion. She was a firm instructor when I learned whom I learned a lot from. We thank God for her witness, for her labor of love, for her service, for her commitment, and for her yes in being a catechist. We will miss her. All that please rest in peace. Amen.
Thank you, Catechist Group. Now, the last of the tributes, Aretha Shallow and Sherika John. After that, we shall have the eulogy by Alex. A pleasant good morning to everyone. On behalf of the past students and the past netballers, we would like to extend our sympathy to the bereaved family this morning and to encourage you that always look to God from whence your help comes from. Be blessed by this song. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why? my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my potion And I know he watches me, and I say, because I'm happy, I say, because I'm free. And I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled. His tender voice I hear. Resting on his goodness, I lose all doubts and fear. On which the path he leadeth, that was one. The sea, his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me, and I'll sing because I'm, I'm happy. I'll sing because I'm free, for his eye is on the sparrow, 
and I know He watches me. And I'll say, because I'm happy, yes, I'll say, because I'm Thank you, Aretha. Thank you, Sherika. We shall now have the eulogy done by Alex. Morning. I know mommy would have been very proud of all those tributes this morning. The eulogy of Aldith Waldron. There are certain kinds of people who do not wait until they are asked, but somehow can anticipate the need. They are thoughtful, sharing, who will give up their support and offer their help to make other dreams and ideas come true. Their love and support is rare and special and somehow brightens our lives day by day. That was my mommy, Aldith Waldron, born June 21st, 1951, to Victoria Hamilton and Noble Etienne, the baby of the crowd. Born into a family of two boys and two girls, obviously she was a mama's girl and I followed into her footsteps. Granny Tora made sure the household was brought up on the Catholic faith and discipline and morals. It was family, school, church, and home. The community of Powell's Avenue was literally a backyard for mommy's home. We had Princess Crease, Isa Rose, and Tante Tinams, all living in one area. She attended the St. Mary's Roman Catholic alongside a few of her siblings. A little tomboy she was. A Brugazian, they used to call her, as she was strong and not an easy walkover. She would find herself in the shadows of her brother Francis and her cousin Sly. A strategy, as my auntie Solita said, so she can climb through trees, play cricket, pitch marbles, and even try to play football. Mommy had a love for athletics, but not the nickname that came along with it. Something of an American Indian chef all that you ought to know is that she was light on her feet and quick. The tall, lanky figure with ties of a stallion would attract Miss Urel Campbell, her first netball teacher. She would put her into the shooting position on a netball team and try to harness her, her talents. Further down in the years of the, of the primary school, she would then meet her long life friend and her long life partner in crime, Miss Gloria Ballantyne. Netball became her first love through the teachings of Miss Campbell and Miss Ballantyne. She, they both taught mommy all the nicks and knacks of the game and the story get better. Mommy would eat, breed and sleep netball, but granny made sure that church was still in the mix as she would have to attend every weekend mass Easter and Christ Christmas vigils, nine morning vigils, Carpus Christi service, and everything that was held in church. As she completed her primary school education, attended the St. Joseph Convent Kingston, 
mommy witty and charming character would attract so many that everybody had Aldit Waldron as her best friend. She was the class favorite. I have heard so many stories about mommy while she was in school, but there was one that stood out for me. Almost everybody in that class one day went home with a French cut whose hair could not even go up in one. All was relaxed, still went home with a French cut. There were also stories of the mango tree who didn't fall from a limb, who didn't pick the most fruits and try to resell them. Mommy had bestest of friends in school. She was really the class favorite. Gloria Komobach, Tony's godmother, she said it was one of her top priorities to always visit mommy when she returned home. She would try it and drop in unannounced to surprise her, which I was a part of one trip to, and to witness the joy and laugh it brought to both of them upon seeing each other, I knew that this was an unbreakable bond. Gloria said even though Mommy broke that sad news to her. In most of the conversations they would have had over the period of time, it was Mommy trying to console her and to bring her back to the good old days. That is what kept her going. As Gloria Ballantyne kept Mommy under her wings, Mommy's skills developed, and we would see her making her debut representing St. Vincent the Grenadines at an early age of 17. From there on going forward, it was a done deal. Mommy moved from the shooting position to the goalkeeping position. This is where she would dominate, even playing alongside Miss Bain a few games, wearing that yellow and blue uniform. Mommy also made the 1979 World Cup team, and she was also a part of the administration from there on until she retired from netball. Miss B and Aldi duo would, seem them, would have seen them making a venture into the admin sector to ensure that netball was a household name for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, a country to be reckoned with regionally, and to be the reason behind the Annis Vale and the netball, the nutrition netball complex being a home for St. Vincent. I could, remark, I could recall after mommy speaking with Odd Ballantyne, I would ask her what he reminded you thereof. She told me that one time where Miss B was trying to get the permission and support from the late Honorable Milton Cato, St. Vincent the Grenadines Prime Minister at that time, to get the complex out at Annesville under construction so that they can host regional tournaments. Miss B literally came and dragged mommy out of work to go and corner him in his office. Mommy used to play for the Falcons. She was an administrator in the three jewel joggers, and then she broke off and became her own founder for a team called Red Sox. Although the baby of the family, mommy had her share of responsibilities. She used to babysit the children of a family friend. She would take care of the Edwards children, Ansel, Marissa, Andrea, Tony, and even Perry and Mark DeFreitas would be in that mix. Andrea would be the one to test mommy, and if I say so, she prepared mommy for motherhood very well. Mommy was always strict, but she was a loving, fun person to be around. Andrea could recall that she used to take her and her sister at Christmas time to spend at the family home so that they can enjoy the joys of Christmas. You would have weekends on the beach, and you would have weekends at home learning to bake bread and cooking that famous pillow, a bond that lasts forever. On August 12, 19 something, Aldith Waldron would marry her love, Seymour Waldron. They would have their sons, both sons, within seven years of their marriage. Yes, long after I came in, I, I was the life of the house, okay. This power couple would then be producers of their own carnival mass band and a youth football coaching clinic. Yes, they realized they needed a girl around, so I was chosen. Mommy would always tell a story where she said I came home one day from kindergarten and told her I chose you. I, I let her have that story, I let her have that win. Mommy was working at W.B. Hutchison's store before they merged to Curry's Hazel 
She would always try her best never to miss a football game for my brothers as they represent this school, and she never missed any of my inter-house sports day after that one year where she realized that I too can carry half of her nickname, that of the American Indian Chief. Mommy was all for her family. I know none of us would forget how she was our savior on morning times at Bishop and Victoria Park playing field, where daddy was somehow training us for the American Army. After a few rounds, mommy would say no. Give me my children. She would come and hug us up and lead us off the park and never look back straight home. Sunday family was our ritual. Everybody in the kitchen simply discussing sports, movies, news articles, news that made the TV. And it would all somehow ended up, not into an argument, but as if it became a battle. That was us, passionate about everything. And I know none of us can forget that chocolate tea she used to make. Her laughter, her vibe, her spirit. It was the house. She was the glue of the house. Mommy would have met and formed some incredible friendship from those she worked with as she was a teacher at the St. Mary's and then an employee at WB Hutchinson store. But it was her last job where she went back to her alma mater, St. Joseph Convent Kingston, and was the PE teacher. For the years there, the staff and the students became family. From 1999 up until October 20th, mommy was the PE teacher and would have come into contact over eight, well, over 9,000 children as she would have taught the entire school PE and various sporting discipline after school. The yard on evening would come to life with that famous whistle. I know Shani Dishang and Marissa and Andrea and Sandy could never forget that whistle. The patter of feet running to the court to see who reached first. The chatter and the laughter of how Glee used to hit our face knowing we have netball practice. And that infamous line, go back during a netball training if a pass was taken incorrectly and a shot that was supposed to be done in one hit was not done. And do not forget, no one is to leave the schoolyard unless you put back on your school clothes. St. Joseph Convent would be crowned champions for five times for inter-secondary athletics championship, placing first three consecutive years, 2003, 2004, 2005. We would have placed second twice, 2011, 2012, and remain in the top four seatings for girls school she had a great teaching team a great set of teachers walking behind her mr chin mr richards miss france and let's not forget her latest inductory into the sweetbread family name sister Marta, miss Fogus, miss jardine and miss balcom was always there and sister Marta was always there this management team was one team that could not be broken Whereas netball, as past members would have mentioned, we never really passed the first round without or uh, until Miss Waldron started teaching us. Both juniors and seniors would reach quarter, semis, and finals almost every year of competing in school tournaments. Again, we were in the top four seatings at every tournament, as well as being back-to-back -back championship in the inter in the inaugural school volleyball tournament 2012 and 2013. But let me not just highlight the physical part, the practical part of mommy. The school would also see 100 passes in the CSEC from the time PE became an exam up until 2019. And I'm pretty sure the girls of this year class would make her proud. Don't ever think otherwise, okay? Mommy PE class was also a class where she would teach you small things life lessons she would also nurture those who needed to be nurtured and try to bring those out of their shell alien those who always sat in a class and was afraid to speak up she tried to help them find their voice yes sports was a major, was a major role in my mother's life but the catholic faith was just as big and even bigger the same regime granny bestowed on her she also tried to bestow on us. 
There is a pew on the left hand side of the church that had the family name on it. Anybody who is a Catholic know that. Mm, come Saturday night, Easter, Christmas, do not sit there. That is for Aldit, her sister, and her children. When it was not her family, she was making sure Catholic students in the primary and secondary school were involved in following their Catholic faith. She was a teacher for the confirmation group alongside Mr. James. Every Tuesday, you would see them under the mango tree in the St. Joseph Convent, Kingston Yard. Saturday, she would attend her catechist prayer group. And on Sunday, she would find herself, her and Tante Brenda and Miss Vera and others to conduct the Divine Mercy prayer session in the church. Not only mommy, not only did mommy had the famous catch line for sports, she also had one or few for her feet. I know a few students would have been left speechless after mommy asked them, have you made your first communion yet? And their reply would have been no. She gave them left, right, and center. I somehow felt sorry for them at time. My mother never missed a church service, even if she wasn't 100%, but can still move, book it, and show she was there at 7 o'clock Mass. And if she couldn't make Saturday, she would find herself at Sunday, 7 a.m. Mass. And yes, I would have to be right behind her. Where you saw mommy, I was close by, either waiting on her or hurrying up to get the task done. She was always trying to teach me patience, but she knew, but she had to know I'm both Aldit and Simo, a fire truck. She became my best friend after all fair of those nicknames I used to call her faded away. Because of a little girl by the name of Shan, Waldron would turn her into pudding. Shan, you were granny's pride and joy, and as we both called you, precious. I know it was a battle, for you to pick who you love more, but I would give Granny the first place, as, I, as it was always her and you whenever me and you fall out, and she would always be the one to bring us back. That was my mommy, the glue, the heart, the everything. She loved that moment, even though she never told you, where she was waiting for you one evening, minutes to four, and no shame. So we went looking for you. And as we passed the church door, we heard children's voice laughing and screaming. So you know, mommy, that in her book is a no-no. Nobody's supposed to be playing in church. So she came inside, and lo and behold, it was precious inside, skating away, laughing and screaming. And I stood there saying, oh, Lord, Shan is going to get it this evening. But to my surprise, mommy remained calm and simply stood there tapping her feet and in a calm voice said, Shan, and with the speed you were going with, you couldn't stop for a daybreak. And as we put on your shoes and get your stuff and headed home, I know you got your lecture, but mommy in the back of her mind was laughing because by the time we got home, she said, you know, Shan, take after you and your, father and your brother. I said, but we ain't far too far from you. And she laughed even more. 2020 was a year where the Waldron family would have come together. After multiple visits to multiple doctors, after many testings, there was nothing left but to do surgery. My mother, she was definitely an amazing person, for even on that day where she was admitted on the ward to be prepped for surgery, only thing on her mind was her students. Alex, you have to organize the exam. You have to type up the SBA sheet. You have to finish getting the marks for the Form 4 and 5 practical SBA. You have to make sure the Form 5 do their work. And in all that's made, I am there trying to, to really get my head around this. I was like, that's what you studying. So I tried to lighten the mood and did a snapshot video because she liked to entertain me in my foolery. And even in my foolery, she was still talking about exams. I had to ask her who put us on. She said, Torah. As the news broke to us that we were going to lose her, I asked, what you mean by soon? Before my birthday, before Christmas, before her birthday, it was a thought that none of us could have compelled. And as mommy went through her journey, 
for the last 10 months, God would have been so great to her. She still had her fighting spirit. She was still Miss Aldith Waldron right down to the end. God would have sent her so much love and so much support. He sent few guardian angels for her as well, Dr. Akil Williams, Dr. Michael Stone, Miss <coughs> Nicole France, <laughs> a few nurses on staff that treated her as she was mother. And all of our family and friends came out to support. They gave what they could. They gave, oh, Bronte. God sent Bronte for mommy. She gave a motivational speech that even I believe that mommy could have beat this. And I know that motivational speech helped mommy to fight up to her last days. And Sister Martha was also there. Millie was also there. Nadia was also there. The staff at St. Joseph Convent was there at every corner. Her church group was there at every corner. I never knew mommy had touched so many lives. And I never knew mommy was so loved. And it was amazing and overwhelming at some point, but I know she was good. She was good with everybody, she was good with God. And I would like to thank everybody for all that support. May God bless you. Aldith Waldron lived a good life. She lived a long life. She was a fighter. She was a mother, a sister, a friend, a cousin, a teacher. But in all, she was a mother. Rest in peace, mommy. Thank you, Alex. Brothers and sisters, we have a problem. The police is outside and saying we're not keeping social distance because there are too many persons in the pews. Families are allowed to sit five in a row. Non-families are allowed just three. So if persons do not move, we would not be able to start this funeral mass or they can just close our church down. I'm very sorry about that, but this is what has happened.
of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Aldith Waldron died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. I cry to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O oh, let your ear be attentive to the voice of my pleading. I place all my trust in you, my Lord. All my hope is in your sin. If you, Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness, for this we refer you. I place all my trust in you, my Lord. All My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count on his word. My soul is longing for the Lord more than watchman for daybreak. I place all my trust in you, my Lord. All my Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Israel indeed he will redeem from all its iniquity. I place all my trust in you, my Lord. All my hope. To the Father Almighty give glory, give glory to the Son, to the Spirit most holy give praise, whose reign is forever. I place all my trust in you, my Lord. All my hope is in your saving word. We shall now have the entrance hymn, the pilgrim song.
Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, humbly implore you for your servant Aldith, whom you have called to journey to, the, to you. And since she hoped and believed in you, grant that she may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 17 to 26. It is good to wait in silence for the Lord God to save. My soul is deprived of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. I tell myself my future is lost. All that I hope for from the Lord. The thought of my homeless poverty is wormwood and gall. Remembering it over and over leaves my soul downcast within me. But I will call this to mind as my reason to have hope. The favors of the Lord are not exhausted. His mercies are not spent. They are renewed each morning. So great is his faithfulness. My portion is the Lord, says my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. God is the Lord to one who waits for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good to hope in silence for the saving help of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Please remain seated, but please join in as we sing together the well-known psalm, the 23rd psalm, The Lord's My Shepherd.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we shall all be changed in an instant, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For that which is corruptible must clothe itself with incorruptibility, and that which is mortal must clothe itself with immortality. And when that which is corruptible clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Please stand as we sing together the gospel acclamation. Reading from the Holy Gospel. Jesus said to his disciples, You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. Please, if it were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am you also may be where I am going you know the way Thomas said Lord we do not know where you are going so how can we know the way Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus 
on behalf of the Cathedral Parish, our Bishop, Monsignor Michael Vicar General, we extend our sincere condolences and sympathy to the members of the Waldron family. And I can assure you that we'll continue to pray in remembrance of our sister and also remembering you also in our prayers, especially at this most difficult time. And so whenever we lose a person that is dear to us, a person who has played a significant role in our lives, we tend to be flooded with all types of emotions. And the first emotion we experience is usually sadness. Someone we love is no longer present with us, and no matter what we do, we cannot change that fact. We might also feel a sense of guilt. None of us ever has a perfect relationship with a loved one. When that person passes on to our eternal reward, we may feel guilty about some of the things we said or did or didn't do, or the time when we, we made that person lost their temper. And often we, we are left with the feeling that we did not let Aldith know just how much we loved her. We might also feel angry, angry at God for taking her away from us so soon. And we may wonder why God has done this to us. We may ask why God is inflicting on us so much pain. And perhaps our anger is made worse by the feeling that it is not right or proper for a believing Christian to feel angry at God. And sometimes we try to suppress our feelings. But no matter how hard we try to do that, our anger is still there. All these emotions and feelings are normal. They are part of our grieving process. But as Roman Catholic Christians, we believe that people like Aldith, who leave this world as faithful followers of Christ, they are with Jesus. We believe that. For her life has merely changed. It has not ended. And since she is now with Jesus, Jesus who she adored in the divine mercy, that every year she helped plan. Every, every time she'll come to the church to assist with, with organizing this devotion. We believe as Catholic Christians that she is with Jesus in the divine mercy. She is with his blessed mother and all the saints. She's now enjoying the presence of family and friends who have preceded her on this journey. Today we read from John's Gospel, and it is at the Last Supper. The disciples were aware that Jesus, who had come to mean so much for them, is going to die. And there's nothing that they could do about it to stop it. And that is the setting of the Gospel. And that highly charged moment Jesus turns to his disciples and he says to them, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God, have faith in me also. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. And for these men who were grieving already, these were comforting words. These are comforting words being spoken to you, the family of Mrs. Waldron today. Listen to what Jesus is saying to you in this reading. It is a word that Jesus speaks to all those who are being called to let go of those they love because of illness, especially illness that ends in physical death. And it's not easy to trust God in these moments. When Jesus calls on his disciples to trust, he also gives them a reason to trust. He assures them that in dying, he will be going to the many-roomed house of God the Father, and he will be returning home to his Father, Jesus also assures them that where he is going, they will also follow him. And they need to trust that he will bring them at the end of their earthly lives to that place as well. And so he says to them, I will return to take you with me so that where I am, you may be too. Jesus has passed through death to a new life and to fuller life for all of us. Where he has gone, he wants us to follow as well. And these words of Jesus to his disciples on the night before his own death, they gave hope and comfort to all of us here, gathered today to face the death of a loved one, but also to face our own immortality. That one day, just like Alvith, we too will follow where she has gone. But we are asked to do something. Today, Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. 
believe in God, also believe in me. That's the challenge that the gospel gives to us one morning today. But the reading also reminds us of another reality. Many of us work very hard in life to build a house, to make a home for ourselves and for our families. But no matter how hard we work, no matter how large or small our house is, we know that those structures are never our permanent home. We come to that reality. We know that. Death reminds us of this. Death reminds us that there's no final resting place in this world. So it doesn't matter how big our houses are or how much money we have in our bank accounts. This place is not our final resting place. Even the grave in which we lay our sister today, that place is temporary. She will not be there forever. And maybe that's why funeral directors unintentionally emphasize the temporary, temporary nature of the grave and they refer to burial as the internment. An internment means being in between. Being in between this life and the life to come. We will always be people in waiting. Waiting for a final resting place. And for us Christians who celebrate the life of Aldi today, we know that the grave is not her final resting place. We know that. Today the gospel says there are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And after I've gone and come back, I shall take you with me so that where I am, you may be too. Do we believe that for Aldit today? Do we have faith and trust that this is where Aldit has gone? Jesus also wants us to realize that he is the only way to the place he's preparing for us. And so he tells Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We live in hope that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, we will be at home with God forever. Only an intimate and eternally secure relationship with God can satisfy that deep longing that we have in our hearts. And even as we reflect on the life of our beloved sister, wife, teacher, catechist, we will reflect on our own life right now. And we reflect on our relationship with God and our relationship with each other. What does it look like? When I visited Aldi the Wednesday afternoon, just before she died, the Sunday, I went to give her last rites. And she was in pain. She had pain. But in the midst of that pain, you can sense the peace and the tranquility that she had with her. You sense that. And there was this calmness over her that when I left there that afternoon, I wasn't worried. I I felt light because when I was, I didn't want to go and visit her actually. I didn't want to go. I was supposed to go the Monday and I went the Wednesday instead because I didn't want to face what she might have been going through. But when, she, when I got there, there was that peace and tranquility that was in that room that evening. And I sense this calmness was because she was at peace. She was prepared for her own room in that mansion that Jesus promised her that he's going to prepare for her. So today I ask us who are here grieving, but also looking at our own lives. Where are we when it comes to our relationship with God and with all those people that God places in our lives each day? Can we too say that we are preparing for that room that God is preparing for each one of us? So are we living right with each other? Are we constantly communicating with God so that God can speak to us? And at the end of the day, we will do what God has challenged us or God has put on our hearts. Because these are the ways that we are going to prepare for that room that God has prepared for each one of us. That is how we are going to get to that place, just like Alvit. And a long, long time ago, only this I think last week I was saying to the people here at morning mass that a long time ago only old people died. 
all the old people died. I grew up in fancy and it was only old people that were dying, no young people were dying. But that is changing. That is changing. Even the young are dying and they're dying unexpectedly. It therefore means that we have to be in constant preparation for that moment when God would come to see us face to face. We have to be constantly ready. Because if we are not ready, we will miss out on that great room in that mansion. And it is not a call, the death is not a call to be anxious and worried. Death is not a call to be anxious and worried. It's a call for us to just to live in the presence of Christ each day and being conscious of that fact that we are called to be in right relationship, not only with God, but with all the persons that God will place in our lives from day to day and from time to time. Be cognizant and conscious of that. Because that is part of our preparation, that is part of who we are. And I think Alde took that seriously. I think she did. So while today we are truly saddened over the passing from this life of our sister, our faith reassures us that the sadness that we are now experiencing will in time be changed. It will be transformed into joy because Alde, like Jesus, has died but she has died into resurrection, into perfect life. And even now as we continue to celebrate our funeral liturgy, she is enjoying the fullness of God's presence. And we will continue to enjoy that fullness, and she will continue to enjoy that fullness forever. And we hope that one day, we too will follow where she has gone before us. But first, we have to live the gospel each day. We have to do what God is asking of us each day of our lives in order for us to enjoy what our Aldit has gone to today. Today, let us be conscious of how we live with each other when we see that we are Christians. Let us be conscious of that. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus. We join our prayers to him. Your response is, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. In baptism, all that receive the light of Christ, scatter the darkness now, and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our sister Aldit was nourished at the table of the Lord. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Aldit seek comfort and consolation 
heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, Care over. we are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Alden. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. During the preparation of our gifts, we sing our offertory hymn, Oh, what could my Jesus do more? and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Aldit, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior, may find him a merciful judge, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For even though by your, our own fault we perish, yet by your compassion and your grace, when seized by death according to our sins, we are redeemed through Christ's great victory. 
and with him call back into life. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we are clean. Holy, 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 Font of all holiness. Please kneel. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we claim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death, and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Gerard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Padre, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that we bless the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who are pleased in throughout the ages. We may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your you. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Lord, only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we prepare to receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we remind those who are not Catholics that they can come up for a blessing by crossing your arms. Sweet sacrament divine, it is. 
after a short time of silent meditation, our meditation hymn is Daily Daily Sing to Mary. Daily, daily, sing to Mary, sing my soul, her praises do. All her glorious actions share your great contemplation. Be her majesty confessed, for the Let us pray. Please stand.
Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Aldith may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And let's just be seated for a few minutes. The family wants to say thank you. It's not a good morning, but for respect and salutation's sake, I must say good morning to everyone. I've long feared this day would come, and now I'm standing in the midst, delivering the vote of thanks. First and foremost, I'd like to thank God for his blessings and tender mercies. Continuing, I'd like to thank the government of St. Vincent and the Grandies for its support, staff at the Milton Cato General Hospital, Thanks very much for your unflagging care and support during that period. My mom was in that hospital back and forth about nine months. I would like to express thanks to the staff and students of St. Joseph Convent, VC3, for being here with us today to provide a stream or a link for those who are unable to attend. And last but not least, the Catholic Church, the Catechist Group, and the Everready Funeral Home. I would also like to extend thanks to a few families and friends that were always there, including the and family. Alex, my sister, I must give you special thanks. You are exceptional in this episode of our family's life. I would also like to extend thanks to the Etienne Albon family, the Edwards family, the John family, the Wellen family, the Valentine family, the Neverson family, the De Silva family, Franz family, Fogus family, Hamilton family, Sister Marta, the Jardine family, the Bailey family, the Oliver family, the Winds, the Williams, the Stowe. I would also like to expect, extend thanks to the Divine Mercy Pair group, the Corner Kick crew, the Heritage Square Thursday Night Fraternity, the Fellowship at the Clippers Barbershop, and the Community of Paul's Avenue. Thanks to those who gave their support one way or the other, and to everyone who expressed their condolences and well wishes. Thanks also to everyone for sharing their love and time by coming here today to this sad and unforgettable occasion for our family. Anyone I forget, please feel free to accost me and I will personally thank you. Thank you. book of Ecclesiastes tells us that there's a time under the sun for everything. Just as there's a time for coming, there's a time for going. A time to embrace, a time to restrain from embracing, a time to be born, a time to die. A time to say welcome, a time to say farewell. 
My dear sisters and brothers, we have come to the point in this liturgy when we must say farewell. Roll it, you have to say farewell. Alex and brothers, you must say farewell. All of us gathered here must say farewell. We hope that we will all meet again one day in God's kingdom. So I invite you to stand. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Aldith. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Aldith, may Christ to call you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Aldith in the show and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Aldith in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Thank you.